Hello, welcome to the 1611 Defense Podcast. My name is Kyle Kiker, co-host Mitch Knup, mm-hmm. and we're here with another episode of the 1611 Defense. Now, we finished the corrupt line. Uh, we had five episodes, which was fitting number for that, and we uh, we traced the devil's corruption of the Word of God all the way from Alexandria, Egypt, to present day. Uh, now, the episodes were between 35 and 45 minutes, mm-hmm. something along that line. Right. Um, so we could not go into depth too much, but we just wanted to give our audience a good overall view yeah. of, of, what, of what was going on throughout the past 2,000 years or so as far as um, the devil's corruption of the Word of God. The Bible says, For we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God, yeah. As a sincerity, as a truth inside of God, speak we in Christ. And so we covered that in last episode. We started season two uh, on the pure line of manuscripts. We started in Antioch of Syria. Uh, we talked about the Council of Jamnia. Uh, we talked about the, the correlation of the first Bible, if you will. Uh, we know that the original manuscripts were never all in one spot. Um, so that was copies. And so um, we talked about that. We made it all the way to 157 A.D. with the Atala Bible. Now, that's where we pick up today, Brother right, Mitch. Right. Uh, so I've got some interesting things here. I know you do, too. The Atala Bible 157, give us the relationship that that Bible has to the King James Bible that we have today. Well, the... Syriac Bible, as we said last time we were here, uh, noted the first time that the Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek was in a uh, all together in a Gentile language. Right. Uh, about the time the old Syriac started circulating toward the east, then the uh, old Latin Bible called the Itala Bible, or it's also called the Versio Itala, or the Italic. That's where the word Italian comes from. Right. Uh, we down south, we say Italian, <laughs> right. but it's Italian, right. but it can, it is derived from the old Latin. That is the reason why uh, folks that live in South America are called Latin Americans because most of you, the languages that they speak are derived from the old Latin. Right. The One of the greatest uh, hoaxes concerning that is... Uh, In 120 A.D., the old Latin began to be uh, uh, translated out of the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. And uh, that was done uh, in Carthage uh, in Egypt, or not in the same place Egypt is in North Africa. That's the reason why Latin is an African dialect. And um, so uh, the manuscripts that came from Antioch, Syria, where it had, they had been compiled into Syriac, began to be translated about 120, 120 A.D. into right. the Latin language. And by 157 A.D., uh, it was completed. And by 200 A.D., the old Latin Bible, uh, not the Latin Vulgate of Jerome, but right. the old Latin Bible began to circulate through the Balkans and through Bavaria, you know, of course, through Austria and Germany. And and uh, before that, the Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia. And then it made its way to England. And, uh, of course, that's when it was translated into the English language uh, in the King James Bible. Of course, you had six basic English translations before the King James Bible that came from that same text. But by 1600, that Latin Bible, of course, had gone through uh, Germany and gone through Austria Right. And had brought revival through the pure text of concern, of the Bible, and then as it crossed the English Channel and went into England, a uh, country that was no more than seventy five miles from water on any side, right. God uh, used that old Latin Bible, uh, and of course, to set down and with the other translations, the King James translators had it there. They also had the Latin Vulgate. The story behind that too, Brother Kyle, we, as we covered the, the uh, corrupt line, is the fact that 
uh, Jerome corrupted that old Latin Bible and added readings that came from Adamantius origin out of Alexandria, Egypt, and formed what is known as the Latin Vulgate. Yeah, now they basically old, took the same name, yes. just like the New King James did. Yes, it did, and uh, of course, yep. it's not the same animal. Right. Uh, the old, uh, uh, the old uh, legend, uh, hoary with age, is that when John Wycliffe sat down with the 1382 Wycliffe Bible that he used the Latin Vulgate. But it's been proven time and time and again that he had the uh, the old Latin Atala Bible and that he translated from that. Uh, although, of course, the Vulgate was in, uh, was, was in print and it was extant at that time. Now, what, what's important about that is that gives the glory to Rome because mm -hmm. that uh, Latin Vulgate, not the vulgar, Old right, Latin, but right, the Latin right. Vulgate, they say, is the language that came through the Dark Ages and, of course, led us in the Reformation, which is not true. Yeah. There's been, it was a Dark Ages. Yeah. There was a Dark Age. There's no doubt about it from about 1500, to, uh, I mean, from 500 to 1500. But the fact of the matter is, Bible believers had the Bible all through that time were being persecuted. Our Bible-believing Baptist ancestors had the Word of God in the Old Latin, and the Waldensians and the Abigensians used it right. and uh, there in the Cochin Alps and also in, in Albi, France. Right. They had the Old Latin, and they translated it into their colloquial version, the right. Romant version in the, in the hills up there in the Cochin Alps. And they were being persecuted just like Bible-believing Baptists. They weren't called Baptists per se, right. but their doctrine was still Lined Baptistic. It. Yes, it yeah. did. And so there's we saw the old corrupt line through the mm -hmm. Vulgate, mm -hmm. but the old vulgar Latin, the Itala right. Bible, was still extant all through the so-called Dark Ages and gave light as it was translated into the vernacular translations right. in the different countries. Right. Amen. So in... As you know, whoever wins the war writes the history books. Yes, sir. And so since the Catholic uh, so-called church, institution, whatever you want to call it, satanic church, whatever, uh, was in control, they're not going to give uh, credence or whatever. They're not, they're not going to uh, tell you whole, a whole lot about that old Latin. But I wanted to read a verse in Psalm 16 uh, for those of you who are watching this and have a King James Bible and believe it, um, it says the, in Psalm 16, 6, the lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. And that's what we have with some of these older versions like the Tala Bible and the, the Syriac Bashida yeah. and things like that. It's a goodly heritage because the people who toted these Bibles and believed them hid them yes. from the government, okay? And they shed their blood uh, many of them did, holding to the belief of what that they what they had was from God. Yes. Okay, and not going along with the Catholic or, or you know, pagan Rome or or um, or Catholic Rome. Yes. You know, persecuting. So, I wanted to we're we're picking up with 157. I wanted to back up a little bit, and so the original manuscripts. Um, from Moses all the way up through John writing Revelation, uh, I should say Job all the way up uh, yes. through through Revelation there. Manuscripts went to 14, I got it here, 1439 when the printing press came out. Mm -hmm. So before the printing press, you had manuscripts that were handwritten, yeah. okay? Which is what the word manuscript yeah, means. Yeah, manuscript, script, yeah. and manually do it, okay? And... <clears throat> If you look at the whole range of books, ever since 0 AD, you know, as far back as you can go, um, like Caesar's Gaelic War, for example, 58 to 50 BC, there's only 10 quality manuscripts left. Yeah. Okay. And and there's, there's other ones too. But Bible manuscripts, back in around 92, there was 5,800 or so. Yes. And yeah. now I've heard there's over 9,000. So all that being said, those are that just that just tells you what, what the word of God means to people that they take it and they copy it. Yes. And all that being said, um, I don't want to 
repeat last time too much, but out of all those manuscripts, about 90% or so agree in about 97% or so with the King James yeah, Bible. they do. And that, that, those collection of manuscripts are known as the Textus Receptus, yes. the received text, because that's what the true believers underground most of the time, that's what they held to. Yeah. Uh, of course, there was some 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 of them that remained in the Catholic Church, uh, but they just didn't have much light to bring much anything right. out back then. So, 157, the Talib Bible explained, Brother Mitch, how how the Lord worked east to west from the Talib Bible and through the Dark Ages. I know you mentioned the Anabaptists. Yes. A little bit. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Well, the Bible believer in the world, no matter what generation he lives in, uh, Marvin Fieldhouse, who was a missionary to Japan, made the statement many years ago. He said, the duty of every Christian and every believer in every generation in which he finds himself is to find out the spirit of the age yep. and walk directly against it. Now, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, Brother Kyle yep. and myself are not out to try to make trouble or cause trouble or, or try to lift ourselves up like we know something somebody else doesn't know. These things have been extant in print for centuries. Yeah, long time. But they have been squelched in so many different areas, mainly by Rome. And, and I know that makes some people angry, but and the fact of the matter is... Little whore daughters, too. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. We as Baptists are not Protestants. Uh, we yeah. didn't protest against Rome. We were never in Rome to pull out. So, so while uh, Martin Luther and while John Calvin's mother was taking the syrup out of their formula, Bible-believing Baptists were preaching the gospel all over the world and being persecuted for the cause of Christ. So we have, as Brother Kyle read, a goodly heritage. And I don't apologize. There's no, mm -hmm. there's no individual, male or female, walking on two feet that I'm going to apologize to for truth. And I'm just not going to do it. Uh, I never have, and I'm not going to start now. I've been preaching 43 years. But the uh, as the Assyriac uh, translation, as we said before, was active by 120 A.D. and in, in heading toward the east. And, of course, today if you go to the average Bible college, they will try to tout the Philoxenian Peshitta or the Harklian Peshitta. The Philoxenian was out from under uh, a, a, a bishop of Magba. His name was uh, Philoxenia. Right. And that's when it was translated. But you're talking about 508 and 616 A.D. Right. And so when you go off the Bible college, what they will do, they will say that is a late production, the Syriac Peshitta. They call it the Harklian under Thomas of Harkel or the Philoxenian under Bishop Philoxenia. Uh, and they will say that that's 500 or 600 extraction because they know that Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, the Roman Catholic manuscripts that made up the Catholic Bibles, were not translated until about three, about 330 A.D. So yeah. they can't have a manuscript. I'm talking about the Bible corruptor. They can't have a manuscript that predates Sinaiticus yeah. and Vaticanus and Alexandrinus and all the other uh, codices. But yeah. what they do is they the do old, the same thing yeah. with the Latin Bible. And they say that it's a late extraction, that the Latin Bible doesn't go uh, all the way back to 157, that it's yeah. a late extraction, and that's in the Vulgate. And that was Jerome's work between three, 383. Pope Damasus is the one that commissioned him to corrupt, take Origen's work and improve the old Latin and form the Latin Vulgate. Well, that was 400 A.D., see. Yeah. So uh, so that goes, in their mind, that goes back and predates the late manuscripts that the King James translators had on their table yeah. when they translated the King James Bible. Please keep in mind that when the King James translators sat down from 1604 to 1611, they not only had the old Latin Italo Bible, but they had Jerome's Latin Vulgate. Yeah. And in some areas in the Old Testament, they leaned upon those readings when they matched the old Latin Italo Bible. When they didn't match, they tossed them out. 
And that's what that's the reason the King James Bible is different than the modern versions yeah. in the Old Testament, especially. But yeah. it's always a deception, Brother Kyle. That's yeah. Satan's. That's what Satan does. He's a deceiver. He's a liar, and he hates the Word of God. And anything yeah. he can do, no matter how minute, no matter how minuscule that it seems, to corrupt the Bible, that's what he'll yeah. do. Yeah, and it's built upon a faulty foundation yes. anyway. The older yeah. is better. That's that's proven by the by the verse quoted at the start of this podcast that they were corrupting the Word of God back in Paul's yeah, day. Second Corinthians two seven. So older is better. That's that's not even a good argument. Yeah, uh, I'm older than Kyle, but I'm not better than he is. <laughs> I don't, uh, so I mean, hey, we're we're all nothing yeah. except we have Christ's righteousness. Well, the, the original theory of the earth was that it was flat. They know better now that it's not some, flat. And if they had a Bible in Isaiah 40, they would know that God ruleth on the circle of the some, earth. Some people listening, I think, still believe it's flat. But anyway, well, uh, we won't get into that. I, <laughs> I just uh, let that go. Okay. I, I, I try to stick with arguing what I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, blah, blah, blah. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, flow and stream and the older and yes, better and all that. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, so the the late manuscript argument, we're going to talk about that um, uh, later, you know, later too. But um, so the next major language. Now, the word of God was translated in all kind of different languages. You have you have Spanish, different ones that was um, French, different languages that the word of God was translated into. But there's been seven major languages that it's been in. And, it, of course, that corresponds with Psalms 12, 6. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver. So as and like, being taking a physical thing mm -hmm. to uh, help communicate an idea or a doctrine that you can't see. Right. Okay? Right. So the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried and furnace of earth. People say, well, our pure words, that's present tense. Yeah, the Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Yeah. Okay? So God's got the finished product in heaven. Yes. All right? That's, yeah. that's the way I see it anyway. Yeah, there's no doubt um, about that. The words of the Lord are pure words, and I believe that, you know, people, some of you are going to think we're crazy. I don't even know if Brother Mitch believes this. And I don't know this to be fact, but I kind of think that there is a King James Bible in heaven. Okay? And well, we're not going to be judged out of Hebrew, Greek, and Latin or Aramaic because we speak English. Yeah. How's God going to judge us when we've That's been right. accountable to an English Bible? So it's yeah. got to be there. The Word has got to be there in, in every language. Yeah. I, yeah, I can see it. So it's settled in heaven, okay? And as silver trying to in a furnace of earth, the words of the Lord are pure, silver trying in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. And you can take that seven times, we'll talk about that later. But there's seven major languages, first being Hebrew, okay, Old Testament written in Hebrew. Aramaic, you have da parts of Daniel when they were in captivity, uh, written in Aramaic. And then, of course, the New Testament written in Greek. Well, then you have the Syriac, which is number four, which we talked about. And then the Old Latin, which yeah. is number five, okay. And like I said, there's other languages that it was translated to, but it wasn't major languages yes. that really have a whole lot to do with the spine of the history of the King James right, Bible, exactly if right. that makes sense. So language number six, and we, we're, let me preface this, we're about to talk about German, okay, and I know we're skipping a lot of years, okay, we're going from 157 and <laughs> scooting through to around 1500, right, okay, right. but like we said, the Catholic Church, this was the millennial reign of Satan, okay, in a certain way yes. of looking at it, okay? His church, Catholic Church, in control, and the world's in darkness spiritually for yeah. the most part, okay? Now, um, Martin Luther obviously came out, you know, the De Heilige Schrift Bible there in German, but I want to talk just a second, and then we'll let Brother Mitch jump on the German thing about how the manuscripts got there, okay? And we'll get, we'll actually get Brother Mitch to talk about Erasmus here in a second. <clears throat> but God works east to west, okay? We've talked about that. Revivals yeah. flow east to west, yeah. things like that. And manuscripts did too. And in the fall of Constantinople in 14, what was it, 1453, 
you have a flushing out of Greek scholars and Greek manuscripts yeah. westward. Yes. Yeah, okay? So we know that there's an example of that in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The saints are huddled at Jerusalem, like we talked about last podcast. And the Lord said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And everybody's kind of huddled up in Jerusalem. Right. So the Lord sends persecution. And then they start, or I shouldn't say the Lord sent it, but he allowed it to be sent. He allowed and it they, to be sent. And they yeah. went out. Okay. So Greek manuscripts flowing east to west. Pick us up with Erasmus. All right. Uh, Desiderius Erasmus lived from 1466 to 1536. He was a Dutch. In those days, he was called a humanist, which is which means uh, humanitarian uh, at, that, right. at that day, or uh, it's not what a humanist is today. A humanist right. today is <clears throat> basically a secular atheist or communist. But Erasmus was probably the most brilliant man living mm -hmm. at that time. Every extant Greek manuscript he had access to, and what people don't realize, Desiderius Erasmus, and I'm glad... Uh, mom named me Mitchell instead of Desiderius, but you know that's the way it goes. But I'm uh, uh, thinking about in the reading I've done on Erasmus is that he was absolutely brilliant. Nobody yeah. could stand with him. See, the reason I say that is because today all you hear is scholarship. Scholars, oh, this is a scholar. Well, a scholar is a student yeah. according to the Bible. A uh, scholar is not the master or the teacher. He's the student. And so we're students. Mm -hmm. We're scholars. So Erasmus uh, was not only a scholar, but he was an absolute master in his trade. Uh, he he um, knew Latin and Greek. And in 1516, he produced the first Greek manuscript, uh, of course, uh, it became printed, and then he had four editions after that, 1516, 1522, 1516, 1519, 1522, 1527, and then 1535. When the King James translators sat down, they had on their table for seven years, they had the 1527 and 1535 edition of Erasmus, which had, by the way, 1 John 5, 7, in it, just exactly like it's in the King James Bible. But the old adage was that Erasmus didn't have the proper manuscripts um, to, to bring us 1 John 5, 7, so he had to fabricate it. That's a, that's a, another lie, hoary with age. He had uh, manuscript 629, and he had Monfort manuscript 61, which are Greek manuscripts, plus he had the old Latin readings of the church fathers. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what. As authority for 1 John 5, 7. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that we should go there. Okay. No, well. I started to pick up on 1 John 5, 7. Keep on going. Sorry. Well, it's just the greatest verse in the Bible on the deity of Christ, along with First. And Timothy James 3, White 16. and other people don't like it in there. Well, that's right. I, I wonder about you can somebody. Watch, hold on. I, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I got to tell listeners this. <laughs> okay. All right. It, if you're watching this on YouTube, okay, you know what YouTube is. If, if, it, if you're listening to this, you can find this on YouTube. James White is on YouTube, uh, I guess, debating with a Muslim. The Muslim knows what he uh, believes about First John five seven. Ask him, or maybe it was Mark sixteen nine through twenty. It was one of those two, and oh, that shouldn't be in there. Blah blah blah. And then the, I believe it's the same video. There's another guy, and I wish I remember his name. And he's like, no, that shouldn't be in there. First John five seven. Um, that's a key verse, obviously. Yes. I, my my three year old son. That's you know, I'm teaching him Bible memory, okay? That's one of the first verses that he learned or about, is learning is first John five seven. Because I know when he gets older, fifteen years from now, yeah, right. You think you know, we think the per persecution, we think all the all the, you know, people going on about first John five seven is bad now. Fifteen years from now if the Lord hadn't come back, yes. Uh that's gonna be a it, it probably won't even have the number in the versions by then. Right. You know, right. They, they've taken it out now, but still have a First John 5, 7 and borrow from verse 6 and verse yeah. 8. Yeah, But anyway, all that being said, um, I interrupted. Oh, that's all right. 
Go that's ahead. What, that's what this broadcast is for. We don't we're not in any certain format, I mean, and of course. Um, you know, we, we discuss what the Lord lays on yeah. our heart. Desiderius Erasmus. Yeah. That, that's what we was talking about. Desiderius Erasmus was challenged to produce a Greek text that had 1 John 5, 7 in it. And, of course, uh, he did find it. It wasn't produced. It wasn't fabricated. It was found mm -hmm. that had 1 John 5, 7 in it. So he uh, included it in his 1527 and 1535 edition of Greek text. Now... Uh, that being said, if you take 1 John 5, 7 out of your King James Bible, then uh, the verses don't make sense. You not only mess up the Greek structure, which I'm not interested in but uh, right now, but uh, you mess up the, the context of the verses. And, and, and this, this needs to be said too. Uh, you take your King James Bible and you look at the very first verse in the King James Bible, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heaven and earth. And you look at the very last verse, Revelation 22, 21, mm -hmm. and you, uh, and you uh, now Jesus Christ is the word. He said, I, he said uh, that uh, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's quite a statement. Yeah. But he said, he's, I'm the Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning of the end. I'm the first and the last. So that means he's everything in between. Right. Well, you take a King James Bible. Don't try this with New King James or New yep. International Version, English Standard Version, or any of the rest of them because they mess it up. But you take Genesis 1-1, Revelation 22-21. Since Christ is the Word, if Word is made up by letters. So if He's the Word, He's every letter in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, He's the Word. Jesus Christ is the Word incarnate. This is the written Word. Right, right. So you take those two verses, first and last, only in a King James Bible, and you add together all of the words, all of the letters, all of the consonants, and all of the vowels in yeah. those two verses. It equals the same number of words, letters, vowels, and consonants as found in 1 John 5, 7 in a King James Bible. Yep. The New King James misses it by one letter because they say heavens in Genesis 1 instead of heaven. Well, it, folks, when the creation was made, there was just one heaven, and God broke it down into three heavens. So it is heaven, and, and a miss is as good as a mile. Close yeah. only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Yeah. So the King James Bible's right on the money. So if you don't have a King James Bible, now don't tell me. Erasmus did that. Don't tell me the King James translators nah, did they that. Have of that. God did that. God mm -hmm. did it. And so that's one of the proofs. I don't really need any proof this is the Word of God. It speaks to my heart and convicted me of my sin and saved my soul. The engrafted Word, yeah. which is able to save your soul, James one twenty one. So uh, I have no doubt in my mind, but see, we have a world of skeptics. This is an age of skepticism, so you gotta, yeah. you've got to prove it to people today. But there it is, and I could give you about 15 more instances in this book right here that show you why there's 66 books supposed to be in your Bible, not 72. Right. And uh, given right here in the text, I don't have to go to Greek. I don't have to go to Hebrew, yeah. although I know some of both. I don't need to go to either one. I've got an English Bible. That's it. Yeah. Amen. This book's this book's loaded. It's 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 a it's a pistol. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, I skip. We skip John Wycliffe a little bit. We've yeah. we've referred to John uh, Wycliffe and all that. Uh, John Wycliffe was termed the Morning Star of the Reformation. Yeah. And if you <laughs> look in Revelation, uh, I forget what version. What verse is that where it talks about, and I will give them the morning star? That's 222, I believe. Is it 222? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is good. Um, yeah, 222. No, that's that's not it. It's two, uh, 228. 228. Oh, yeah. I was just six. Yeah. So and, I will, and I will give him the morning. Yeah. And those of you who know church history and know how Revelation 2 and 3 uh, lines up with church history yes. and where that fell where it says I would give him the morning star and he's called the morning star of the reformation uh, interesting 
to say the least. But anyway, um, the Wycliffe Bible was the first full English Bible. Yeah. It wasn't just a few books here. And new t- you know, it was the, f- the full thing, first one. And it was hand copied. And it took about, what, 10 months for a yeah. copyist to do that, yeah. an experienced copyist. And the rental on that thing was, was really high. I wrote it down here. Uh, the rental for one hour was one load of hay. Now, the purchase price was equivalent to one year clergy salary no. to get a Wycliffe Bible. One year. So a clergy today what makes, what, 50 grand on average? Yeah. 45, yeah. 50 grand? Uh, <clears throat> at least probably in Charlotte. Well, Charlotte in, in the city limits probably make a little, a little more some of the big churches. But uh, figure 45, 50 grand for one Bible. But the word of God was precious in those yes, days, okay. And and people would people would stay up. They would get out of the fields from working and laboring. And those of you who work, uh, you know, work field jobs, you know, uh, you know what it's like to come back from work and be all sweaty and nasty in the summertime. Yeah. And all you want to do is eat and get a shower and relax a mm-hmm. little bit. These people would get if somebody have a, a Wycliffe Bible, they would get and listen hear the word of God read and sometimes they would find the morning light coming up mm-hmm. and they'd been there all night yes uh, that's that's how precious the word of God was in those days because remember the Catholic Church starved them of the word of God yeah yeah they so they said huh and today it's the polar opposite people have the pure words of God in my opinion yeah, number sir. seventh edition yeah right yeah <laughs> you know purified seven times uh, <clears throat> I believe that's God's opinion too. But anyway, yeah. um, or, or uh, opinion is not the right word. But anyway, we've got the Word of God, and we don't we don't read it much. Well, you, you know, we have the the Word of we God, so called the Protestant text. Although, like I say, that came during the Protestant Reformation. But as we said, Baptists didn't need a Reformation; they were already you know faithful to the Word of God. Yeah. But they helped the Protestants as long as they could during the Reformation until the Protestants refused to give up infant baptism mm. and consubstantiation through Luther. And mm. so that's when the Baptists backed off and then they became persecuted by the Protestants just like the, the, the Catholics had been doing. But, but uh, John Wycliffe, sometimes called Wycliffe, was the, he was a bishop of Lutterworth, very brilliant man, uh, loved the Lord, and... He used the old Latin Bible to translate his edition of the uh, Wycliffe Bible. He died in 1382, and when he died, the second edition of the Wycliffe Bible, 1388, was by John Purvey. I think he was a bishop of Hereford. John Purvey went back and took the Latin Vulgate and added some Latin Vulgate readings into the Wycliffe Bible, and that's where the Latin Vulgate readings came from. Is they it didn't... true that he defected to Rome yes, later in yes, life? Yes, yes, he defected to Rome yeah. uh, later in life, which 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 yep. proves you know. I our had read point. that, but I yeah. Well, that's true. It proved it proved yeah. the point. So, see, uh, uh, the, another problem is. People just believe what some teacher in a Bible college spouts out, mm-hmm. whether it's true or not, whether they can document it or not, whether they have evidence or not. But that's something they were taught, and 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 their teacher was taught, and their teacher was taught. So it's handed down, and uh, there's no there's no justification for it, and no proof for it. But it but it goes down from teacher to student, from student to church. And that's why our churches are in the condition. That's why there's no yeah. power in the pulpit. That's why the music has been degraded to the point that it has today because people have left this King James Bible. The King James Bible does not spawn this worldly music that nope. is going on in churches today. Most of the churches that have it don't use a King James Bible. Well, true, true. And some of them that are using it use it and don't believe it. Yes, exactly right. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know that I should get, Well, I... I'd, I went to a church in near Fayetteville, Spring Lake, North Carolina, um, and I ran into a missionary last week uh-huh. that's out of a church in Fayetteville that I, after I left the church in Spring Lake, I went to Northview Baptist Church in Fayetteville, Pastor Bruce Grimes, um, and really enjoyed it, stood up for the book, I, and I haven't been there in a while, I'd go back and visit, but anyway, a missionary out of that church, I saw, them, saw him this week, and the church I used to go to in Spring Lake 
looked like a good church. I mean, women were wearing dresses, some of them, you know, and I should say some of them, you know, I mean, mainly dresses and all, and, you know, the music was good and all that. And we, we were at um, an event that fall. Uh, this was back in 2009. And one of the main guys in the church uh, said, I believe, you know, he said the ESV is the closest to the originals. Oh. And I was really shocked because, from my understanding, this was an independent Baptist church. Um, and I said, well, what, is, what does the pastor think about that? Mm hmm. He said, well, the pastor told me, uh, said, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, we used to King James Bible because it's in the church bylaws. Oh. And, and you know, it, we won't make a big deal out of it, you know. And so you it's expediency is, yeah. what, is what it so, is. So, yeah, so it, it, to make a long story short, I left. Went mm -hmm. to Northview, and, I, boy, I was glad I left. Yeah. I ran into that missionary last week, and he said that there. He said that they that church has taken a an apost an apostasy turn like crazy, to like that their music is just horrible now. But see, that's what'll happen. You give up the book, yeah. believing it. I didn't say using it. If you don't believe the word of God, problems will come. Because yea, hath God said is coming up, and that's another. And, and see, that's another farce. The English Standard Version is just a Roman, uh, not a Roman Catholic, but it's just Calvinist. a Calvinist, Calvinistic slant upon the old RSV of 1952. That's all it is. They take the word potentate out and put the word sovereign in, which is not in your King James Bible. Anybody knows that God is sovereign. But God is, uh, Thomas Jefferson said the God of John Calvin was a devil. And uh, he, I think he hit it right on the head. Uh, that's fatalism. <laughs> that's, your, that's your tulip, your, uh, you know, your five points of Calvinism, which I am absolutely dead set 100% yep. against. Yeah, me too. So if anybody has any doubt about that, I am as anti-Calvinist okay. as you can be. Yeah. I, and I'm not an Armenian either. Because I believe in eternal security, Amen. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not Armenian. I'm a I'm a Bible believing Baptist. I'm right there in the middle. Thank God I stick with the book. But that thing is is another thing. Uh, yes, the ESV is very close to the original Alexandrian text. Well, that's but, what they but, refer to when right, they say yeah, original. Right. They re right. they're referring to Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. Exactly. And it is. It's yes, it is in the English language. Yeah. Very but it's close. not too close because it doesn't contain the apocrypha apocrypha because they have to sell them. Yeah, absolutely. The apocrypha anyway. interspersed in the old New Testament. And I yeah. know what people think, well, the original King James had the in between the testaments. Mm -hmm. And the translators gave seven reasons why it was not inspired and should it would only be for recommended reading. And then uh, uh, if you've ever read the Apocrypha, which I have, it's full of uh, it's full of errors. One guy dies three times. Three times. Antiochus Epiphanes is killed three times in three different places. You have magical incantations. Uh, you have, uh, oh my goodness, uh, some prayers of, for the dead. Yeah, that, prayers man? for the dead, indulgences. No wonder Rome yeah. pronounced a curse at the Council of Trent upon everybody that didn't believe the apocrypha. In 1546, was and from my understanding, that Council of Trent, 1546, yeah. anathematizing us for not, you know. Oh, yes. That has never been rescinded, to my knowledge. No, it hadn't. And, and Jesus and Christ so, never quoted from the yeah, apocrypha, neither yeah. did any of the apostles. Yeah, so all that, yeah. And so when when the Catholics take control of a government, okay, the Council of Trent technically is still in force. Yes, it is. Yes, it and is. And so persecution, you know, arises against uh, everybody. Bill Grady made a good a good statement uh, there. He said, talks about you know the the beheadings. Talking mm -hmm. about in Revelation. Yeah. Um, you know the Muslims they like to behead people, and they're linking up on Mary. Yeah. Them and the Catholics are. Um, well, the Quran has a whole chapter dedicated to Mary with 34, I think it's 34 mentions of her name. Well, only woman mentioned in the Quran. Yeah, well. Is Mary. Mary was a godly woman, but she wasn't a queen of heaven, Jeremiah 7, Jeremiah mm -hmm. 44. Uh, and she, she was a godly Jewish virgin young girl that was obedient to God that brought forth Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. 
but she she had to get purified to, from yeah, her uncleanness. Yes, Luke two twenty two, I believe anyway, it is. But she again. had no, she had other children after Jesus Christ. Yeah. And of course, if you're from Rome, you don't believe that either. But yeah. that's right there in the they, book. They say, is this not Jesus, whose mother and father? You know, they say father. Yeah. Right? We know. Uh, and his brethren, or yeah, his, his sisters, brethren. you know. Well, so. they say that's their cousins, but the King James Bible's got a, uh, he's got a ranch for every boat. This King James Bible, it says a prophet is not without honor, saving his own house, right? That's hmm. his brothers and sisters, or his own kin. That'd be his cousins. So there's no way that Christ's brothers were his cousins. They were his brothers and sisters, and Mary if she did not render under her husband due benevolence, like the Bible says, yeah. in First Corinthians chapter seven, then she sinned anyway, yeah. and she couldn't be the queen Unless of heaven or our mediatrix. Or yes. Yeah. Well, that concludes this episode. Um, yeah. So we ended up with with. Uh, I started. Uh, what was his name? John Wycliffe. John Wycliffe. And we talked about Desiderius Erasmus. And so next episode, uh, we will. We will start talking about Martin Luther. And boy, he was a character if you've ever seen yeah. one, boy. Um, so thank you, guys. Um, if you have any questions that you want to be on the podcast, um, email us at info at 1611ministries.org. Info at 1611ministries.org. If you have a question, a Bible question that has to do with about the Bible, if it's a doctrinal question, we might answer it too. That's not really what we're this is designed for, um, you know. But uh, if you have a question about the King James Bible, email us. Um, you can also find us on Twitter, which I don't get on very much, uh, so there's not too many posts there. You can find us on Instagram. I don't get on there much either. Um, get on Facebook probably the most. You can find us on Facebook uh, or shoot us an email. And you got anything else? Yeah. My website, MitchLKnup.com, yeah. you can go to that, but don't expect me to answer you because I don't even have a computer or an iPhone. So <laughs> it has to go to Brother Danny Craig, and then he gives it to me at church. He's a the computer whiz that takes care of all that stuff for me. And that's that was their idea, him and my pastor. I They told me they was going to get me a website. I said, you're going to try to get me killed is what's going to happen. But anyway, it's been fun. It's, it's been been real good this last 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Amen. All right. You guys have a good day. Thanks.